Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, and welcome to this week's video. Well, it's been quite an interesting week, especially in Washington, D.C. There's been enough news and reports and thoughts and opinions about our president. We have a brand new president and all the events that took place, everything from the dinners to the balls to his speech. Was it too long? Was it too short? Was it too dark? There was all kinds of information out there, even on fashion, what the first lady was wearing. So this week on this video, I, I want to talk about Washington, D.C., but not about uh, what happened with President Trump and all the events surrounding that. Are you aware that on Tuesday, January 10th, there is a, a new Planned Parenthood facility right there, not too far from where our new president took the oath of office. And, and in this Planned Parenthood facility, over 20 clergy members gathered together and, and they blessed this facility. Now, when you say 20 clergy members, when that is a headline and when that is spoken about, people are going to think that they were all just Christians. And there were some other religions, and religions involved, but there was 20 clergy members. They gathered to bless this Planned Parenthood facility. And, and I don't want to get this, I don't want to misquote this. The president and CEO of the Planned Parenthood of Metropolitan Washington, this is what she said, quoting her in almost every message to our staff. I talk about our doing sacred work. This confirms how sacred our work is. And the med medical director of the same Planned Parenthood facility, she said this, now I can tell our patients this is a blessed space. Think about that. What happens at Planned Parenthood? The, the, what happens in that facility? And now we're being told that clergy are coming together to bless this. Now when the event was over, they, everybody who was there, the clergy and everybody who was involved with this, they gathered in a circle, they held hands, and they sang a song. There was singing and dancing going on, but they concluded this, this blessing service by singing the song, This Little Light of Mine. Now, when you hear that song, maybe you heard that for the first time when you were in, in Sunday school. You hear that song, you think it's a children's song. It's a children's church song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. However, let's not forget the fact that that song is based on Jesus' own words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And if you're not familiar with Matthew 5, 16, what it says, it says that, Let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the message being presented in Washington, D.C. with a Planned Parenthood facility. Oh, and by the way, this Planned Parenthood facility, which was just blessed by over 20 clergy, it sits right next to a charter school. Can you imagine what the students in that charter school will be receiving and the information they will be receiving? Well, if that's not enough about Washington, D.C., on Sunday, January 8th, Calvary Baptist Church which if you go on their website, is still a Christian church. They, they, up until 2012, they were part of the Southern Baptist Convention. It's one of the most historical Baptist churches in Washington, D.C. And again, it's not very far from where, where President Trump took the oath of office. What happened at Calvary Baptist Church? On Sunday, January 8th, they welcomed two new pastors. There are now two legally married lesbian women who are now co-pastoring Calvary Baptist Church. One of the most historic Baptist churches still call themselves Christians in Washington, D.C. are being co-pastored by two lesbian women. Now, the further background to that, their theology, where they're coming out of, some of their theology I'm quoting from their website, it says, few of us believe in divine judgment after death, rejecting the idea of eternal damnation. So part of their training and part of the background they came out of is they don't believe in hell. And here you have, now if you hear the word Calvary, you hear the word Baptist, you hear the word church, you're assuming you're walking into a Christian church. That's the doctrine that will be taught there, and it's being led by two lesbian women as co-pastors. Did you hear that news in Washington, D.C.? As I said, it's been quite a week in Washington, D.C. And not far from there... And in Richmond, Virginia, just, just across the border from D.C., a Republican-led committee just turned down and killed a bill that would have been the bathroom bill. 
Now this bill would have said that you have to use the bathroom whichever gender you are born with. And this Republican committee, it was an eight member committee, they decided to take this bill and kill this bill. And they did it by a voice vote, which meant there was no discussion. They got just, they got into, the, into their quarters and they voted on this and they decided to kill this bill. Now I want you to understand what this, this seven member, uh, again, Republican committee, this subcommittee, why they, they said no to it and what the bill was saying. Let me, let me read part of the bill to you first of all. Now, now this bill, it's called the Physical Privacy Act. That was the bill that was killed in Richmond, Virginia. And here's what it said. It said, quoting, the government entity that owns, leases, or otherwise controls a government building shall ensure that all restrooms and changing facilities located in such building provide physical privacy from members of the opposite sex, end quote. The bill goes on to say the Physical Privacy Act, I'm quoting again, makes adequate provision for children seeking single-use restrooms when needed and ensures that children are not forced to experience forced physical exposure to the opposite sex against their will. So imagine an elementary school girl going just to use the restroom and finding an adult male in there or another boy in there, whether they're exposed or not exposed. Imagine what that would do to that little girl. Or, or a teenage girl in high school, you know, a, a sports program, going into the locker room afterwards, and again, finding a, an adult male in there or a, a, a high school boy in there. This bill would have prevented that. It says all government-owned buildings, whether they own it or lease it, whatever they do, and, and that includes public schools. And this Republican committee in Richmond, Virginia, killed that bill. Why would they do that? Well, the governor believes that this measure, measure, this bill, would have been harmful to the economy. As we saw in North Carolina, quoting a, a, from the government office, as we saw in North Carolina, these bills don't just hamper civil rights, they kill jobs. Then another member of the Republicans from this, this General Assembly they said they want, they hope that the Republicans now will drop these counterproductive bills that could kill the economy in Virginia. And this delegate from Virginia Beach, he said, who he served on the committee, by the way, he, he voted down the bill and he said, for the very same reason, it's all about economics to me. He said, I saw that North Carolina lost hundreds of millions of dollars and I wasn't willing to put the state of Virginia in that particular position. What are we coming to? Protecting our children? Doing what's right? Or worried about making a dollar? Is that really what our schools are about? Allowing a little girl, a teenage girl, anybody to be exposed to that just because you're afraid it might hurt the economy? That's the news taking place in Washington, D.C. Now, there's plenty about our president and the balls and the fashion and everything else that they're doing, the dances, the food, everything. But are we talking about the churches? Are we talking about the Planned Parenthood? Are we talking about the bills being passed? In Minnesota, Bell Plain, Minnesota, just a small little town in Minnesota, the Veterans Committee there decided to do a monument in Veterans Park. And what this was, this was a silhouette of a, of a soldier. And he was bowed down on one knee in front of a grave marker. And, and what this, this Veterans Committee did in Minnesota was they went back and they got all the names of anybody who died in war from this little town, Bell Point, Minnesota. They went back to the 1800s. They did the Korean War, the Vietnam War, any war where anybody from their little town, their little area had passed away, had given their lives to serve our country. Their names was put on this memorial and the memorial was there and the silhouette of a soldier bowing down in front of this grave marker was what they did. Well, they were sued by an atheist group because the grave marker was in the shape of a cross. And the atheist group sued them and they were saying that this was unlawful government endorsement of religion. And this veterans group was forced to cut out, to cut down the cross. Now, I just want to say that there are uh, veterans cemeteries across the country that has crosses by the, as grave markers, including Arlington National Cemetery. 
Now, I'm not sure this news is making mainstream news, and this is what Interpreting a Time does. We bring you up to date on what's happening there. And I want to take you back one more time for one more story to November. In November 27th, just after Thanksgiving a couple months ago, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, he was speaking. He was speaking in Washington, D.C. at a National Lawyers Convention. And what he said was, you know, in front of lawyers now, so, and again, this is a Supreme Court justice. He was saying, our greatest threat in America is not the threat to free speech, but the greatest threat in America is the, the threat to our freedom of religion. And, and these stories I'm talking to you about kind of gives you detail to what Alito was speaking to. He said in, in, this, in this convention, I'm quoting him, as I, he says, I am reminded of a song by the latest recipient of the Nobel, Pro, Nobel Prize for Literature. It's not dark yet, but it's getting there. And then Alito went on to, do, to describe a case that happened in Washington State. There was a pharmacy there. The pharmacy is called Ralph's Thriftway. It's just a mom and pop pharma pharmacy. And the owner of that pharmacy one day got a phone call asking if they stocked the morning after pill. Now the owner was a Christian. He did not believe in that pill, did not believe that they should carry that. So he said, no, they, they, that's not a pill that they carried. His small staff, two of the pharmacists, agreed with the owner, and they had religious convictions about carrying that pill. So after he declined uh, the phone call, he started getting more phone calls and more emails, and then they began to protest out in front of his little pharmacy. And because the protests happened, they went to the Washington Board of Pharmacy, the Washington State Board of Pharmacy, and they made a complaint against him, and that launched an, an investigation. And with this investigation, they came out and they said basically that he would need to stock the morning after pill. Well, that was in 2006, and that ended up going to court. Now, they had refused to stock this for religious beliefs. They did not believe that they were, their convictions were against this. In 2012, six years later, a federal court ruled against Ralph Thriftway. Now, again, Supreme Court Justice Alito is telling this story at the convention. And then after they ruled against Ralph's Thriftway, they went back and they appealed it, and it went back to the Ninth Supreme Court, the Ninth, I'm sorry, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against the pharmacy. So then it went to the Supreme Court, and most of the members of the Supreme Court declined to hear this case. Alito said it was himself, Justice Thomas, and Justice Roberts who were willing to hear this case. But because they, they, the majority of the Supreme Court was not willing to, it got bumped back to the decision from the Ninth Circuit, which ruled against this pharmacy. Now, this pharmacy was willing to, to say, we're not going to carry this, this drug, but we will refer you. And they had over 30 pharmacies within a five-mile radius they were willing to refer people to. We're not going to carry it, but you can go over here and get that. And Supreme Court Justice Alito said that's very common practice. In fact, there's no pharmacy in the country that can really stock every drug that the FDA has approved. It's just too many. So referring customers to other pharmacies is very standard procedures. But in this case, it was not accepted. Again, his, his point is the greatest threat that we have in America is not free speech, but it's, a, it's the threat of religious freedom. So it's been quite a week in Washington, D.C., a lot of people have thoughts and comments. But what about Calvary Baptist Church now having two female lesbian, married lesbian co-pastors? What about Planned Parenthood right next to a charter school being blessed by 20 clergy members? What about a small veterans group being told they have to cut down the cross, the memorial that had the names of those who gave their lives for our country because it was in the shape of a cross? What about a small mom and pop pharmacy in Washington State? that can't say we're not going to carry a drug. We'll refer you, but we're not going to carry it for our own convictions. That's where America is today. Again, I'm, I'm, thank you for listening to this video. I'm Pastor Dave. Interpreting at Times is the website. We have articles like this and information like this up weekly, if not daily. If you want to see more information about this, or if you want to contact me on this, feel free to. I would love to hear your thoughts and, and comments on this. If you Google it, it's all one word, interpretingthetimes.com. So, interpretingattimes.com. I'm Pastor Dave. It was great to be with you again this week. We'll see you next week. God bless you.